Well, um, uh, my name is Bila Petu and uh, I'm a professional painter. I was always doing this and teaching exactly the same thing, you know, teaching art, uh, uh, whatever is uh, uh, really uh, uh, close to this or related uh, intimately, such as drawing, color, different techniques, you know, this is an acrylic technique, uh, something, uh, although this is, if people say, well, this is a kind of impressionistic painting, well, forget about it, you know, Monet did not have these kind of paints at his disposal. I think uh, the history of impressionism would be different if acrylics would have been invented. Hello. Well, um, after uh, painting so many scenes uh, at uh, St. Paul, Minnesota, Duluth, Minnesota, Stillwater, Minnesota, uh, then uh, going over to Europe and working in southern France, in Paris, um, in uh, Italy, mostly in Venice. Uh, I uh, f decided to try my luck, you know, with the local scenery. And during the summer, I was uh, very pleasantly surprised uh, by uh, seeing uh, this kind of nice little development. And of course, everybody knows what this is, the Mexican village. But those two buildings, and I'm not talking about a kind of archaeological reconstruction or the way an architect would represent a building showing each and every piece of stone or the kind of interior work of a, uh, of a window or all the brickwork in here, same thing in here. See, uh, the way a painter sees the world is both reduced and both enhanced. Reduced in the sense that you are deprived from all that kind of uh, sweet little detail. For example, somebody pointed out this to me, that this is a door carved by Joe Connell. Well, <laughs> there is absolutely no evidence of the painting about this. You know, it is just a kind of nice red streak here, which is harmonizing with the reds around uh, there. So it is, everything is translated in terms of color and simplified shape, you know, that is, um, we are not getting into the intricacies of what kind of arch this is, as long as it is a kind of pointed arch, in a kind of general sense, for a painter this does the trick. Why? Because a painter is interested uh, not so much what the building, lo building looks alone, uh, but what it looks like when there is a, where there are a bunch of trees, and then the sky, and then what happens next to the building, what happens on this side, what, what happens here. And so this principle that everything is uh, somehow relating to everything, uh, sounds like ecology, you know, but uh, the artists were there already, you know, they realized that if you use certain kind of rats in here, perhaps you have to do something here, something here, something there. And basically the same colors are coming back all over the place, you know, these blues are more or less related to the blue of the sky or to this blue, and again, these orangish purples, you know, and variations are coming back. Sometimes the, the color comes back in a very pure form, or with these turquoises, you know, you cannot get much cleaner than that, uh, or uh, some of these uh, yellow highlights. So, uh, life is translated into color interaction and not so much visual inventory of how many little elements are here. Oh, what is missing? Oh, gee, this is missing. Yes, this is missing. Oh, this is missing too. Wow, this is a bad painting. Well, it ain't, you know, uh, because it works by its own laws and not the laws of uh, kind of minute representation, which is basically all right for an architect or for a photographer. So in this kind of manner, uh, St. Cloud is not any different than uh, any of the uh, bigger cities, uh, Marseille or, uh, or Venice or Nice. Uh, and um, indeed, this is uh, because of the traditional architecture, you know, this is definitely here, uh, you see a little bit of an Italian Renaissance in, 
in this building, well, I'm sure this is not so much a Renaissance, it's something else. This is definitely with these uh, arches, you know, Mediterranean, and there is a kind of nice continuation here. <laughs> this, this is not the asphalt roof, as you can see, but you see all over the place. So it's, uh, it's the kind of, uh, what is this? Uh, the, the tile roofs uh, here, you know, I don't know the exact name. Exact name. So um, you see, uh, this creates a kind of nice uh, colorful sense. And if you had any doubt that this is a kind of warm, warm climate, uh, uh, climate, you know, what we have around here, uh, here are the uh, people enjoying themselves, you know, this is excluded, you know, and he is, I, I guess he cannot afford the Java, you know, or three or, or four uh, dollar coffees, what's going on in here. Here is a little bike here, a girl is just parking or perhaps just uh, taking off. Uh, there are people reading, uh, uh, discussing, again somebody is reading. So it is a little bit of a life here. Uh, and. Um, Indeed, this is not the concoction of the artist because uh, these people put out those uh, chairs and tables, uh, although uh, not too consistently. You know, uh, at one occasion when I started, indeed this was the case. And then I came back the same time, everything was gone. So I went inside, asked the manager what happened to the, to the furniture out there. Oh, we don't put these things out if the weather forecast says that there is a chance for afternoon storms or rain. So I told them, look, I tell you something, uh, I guarantee you. Say, I don't believe in meteorology. You know, Surprise that manager is a kind of grown-up man and still he has uh, some mythological beliefs. So yeah, I told them, look, you know, nothing is going to happen. Uh, while I painted this, you know, and he looked at me, a uh, strange guy, you know, but then I was on his back, so finally he put back everything. Sure, I finished the painting around 2 or 3 in the afternoon, uh, there was supposed to be rain, well, the rain never came, but the, uh, at least the painting is, <laughs> is <laughs> accomplished. Well, uh, then the subsequent history of the painting is quite interesting because it has brothers and sisters, once I realized that uh, uh, St. Cloud is paintable, uh, the fancy word is pittoresque, once uh, that quality has been established, I uh, did uh, something which is, uh, one is called around CRT and then a kind of long view going down to the Paramount. So it became part of a series. And uh, as such, I showed this uh, uh, for a few time, and of course, uh, people uh, like this, and ooed and uh, ooh, there were ooing and eyeing. Nobody was interested in buying this, so uh, I said to myself, uh, anybody who likes this, uh, you know, can have it. You know, well, I don't want to get into the kind of uh, history of ownership. You know, that's a different deal. Uh, but even so, the painting remained uh, rather popular, so ended up on the cover of the 205, 205 uh, St. Cloud Chamber of Commerce. You see the colors have been really zoomed up. Uh, if you compare this part of the foreground, can you see this and this? And now we are getting into here in this area. Well, ain't that sweet. You know, this looks like a bunch of cantaloupe and ice cream thrown out here. You know, in my painting, it is, it is very modest. But of course, uh, it, it, <clears throat> this is an artwork. This is supposed to be an eye-catching, rather loud cover, you know, which is standing out from the uh, rather gray masses of zillion publications that people throw out. So it, it works uh, with a different purpose, in a, in a different function. Well, uh, I might just uh, go back to this and uh, do another one, perhaps uh, uh, sitting here, you know, and uh, getting a different angle instead of emphasizing this, you know, perhaps emphasize this. You know. uh, I never know. I have to make an on-the-spot decision. 
Well, I guess uh, this should do the trick.